ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the invocation by the Reverend Dr. Ken Morris, University Chaplain. Let us pray. O oh Lord our God, so often when we think of you, we raise our eyes to the skies. Here at Embry-Riddle, the sound of an aircraft's engines also has us raising our eyes to the skies. Today, O oh Lord, we outdo ourselves and raise our eyes and our hearts to thank you for the skies full of planes and spaceships. You are the source of the aeronautical talents responsible for this. No matter our stage of belief or disbelief, we pause to thank you, Almighty God, for endowing us with the various talents and the consuming interest in aeronautics that we have developed along the way to this day of recognition, of achievement, and of celebration. We look forward to new and steady growth as we end one era, our lives as students, and enter another era, our earning a living using what we have learned. Help us in your spirit, O oh Lord, to recognize more truly that your gifts to us, our talents, are not mere trifles for our own enjoyment, but are the tools you have placed in our hands to forge our world and the hearts of all people into the shapes of happiness. May we then show to you fitting praise and thanks by living life fully and with joy and by loving all human beings with openness and honesty. And Lord, please hear a postscript for these graduates from those of us who stay behind. May love be ever in your heart May joy be yours to share. And wherever your dreams lead you, may contentment find you there. Amen. And be good. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. John W. Williams, Jr., Executive Vice President for Academics. Please be seated. It's a great pleasure to welcome the families and friends of the graduates, community friends, and our distinguished guests to the most important and probably most anticipated event on our academic calendar, graduation. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce the president of Embry-Riddle, General Ken Tom, who will introduce our speaker for today. Thank you, John. Members of the graduating class, your parents, your friends, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased to add my welcome to each of you here this morning and my special congratulations to all the graduates and their parents. This is really your day. I'm especially pleased and honored to introduce your commencement speaker today, General Dwayne Cassidy, who is a personal friend and a fellow Air Force contemporary of mine, I can tell you without a doubt that General Cassidy had tremendous influence on the careers of many of our Embry-Riddle graduates who have served and are serving in the Air Force's Military Airlift Command. As Commander-in-Chief of this large and critically important major command, General Cassidy was responsible to the President and the Secretary of Defense through the Joint Chiefs of Staff for the planning and the performance of airlift missions during wartime, during periods of crisis, and peacetime exercises. He directed more than 90,000 active duty military and civilian, as well as more than 1,000 aircraft at some 290 locations in 24 different countries. He also was responsible for Air National Guard and Air Force Reserve assets, comprising some 71,000 people 
and 400 aircraft. After 36 years of distinguished service in the Air Force and almost 10,000 hours as a pilot in a variety of Air Force aircraft, General Cassidy retired last year and accepted the important position of Vice President Logistics Technology for the CSX Corporation, which is a large transportation firm with headquarters in Richmond, Virginia. So ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure to introduce a great leader, a great people person, and an individual whose expertise in the transportation world, and especially aviation, is unparalleled, General Dwayne Cass. General Tallman, distinguished faculty, both those behind me here on the stage and in the audience, to the friends and families of the graduates and to you graduates, uh, I'm very pleased to be here today. When I look out there and see the faces of all of you, I wish I were there again. And you're wishing that I would get on with this and sit down so you can get on with getting what you came here for. <laughs> When you came walking in, I sense it's, it's kind of like singing the, the Star Spangled Banner of ours, our great uh, anthem for our country. I never quite get to the second line without getting choked up. And seeing all of you coming in and the shouts and the cheering, individual cheering sections is something to behold. It really is a good way to spend a Saturday morning. To all of you who will cross this stage, and if I may focus my remarks and attention to those of you in the middle with those funny looking hats on, and I sense that's probably as good as any of you have looked in the last four years in this <laughs> university. But let me mo focus my remarks to you, and I sense that every emotion in the world is running down there on that floor somehow this morning. Everything from exhilaration and joy to great relief and anxiety probably as to what is to come. And I imagine as I look up at the parents, there's probably also some great emotions up there in the support sections of this great auditorium as well. There's probably a sense of financial relief in some of you, I would imagine. And then as your child walks across this stage, there will be a sense of absolute amazement on probably others of you. And I know that firsthand, I've witnessed it. So this is a great day. It is an absolutely joyous day. It's a momentous time for all of you, those sitting down here and those in the cheering sections. And I would hope the cheering sections would really cheer as well. That's what makes these fun. But it is a great time in your life and you have every right in the world to enjoy it to the hill and to savor it. Savor this moment, so savor away all of you, please do. You also have every right to have a graduation speaker that understands the situation you are in today. And I want to assure you that I do understand the situation you are in. In fact, when considering what I should say here to you today, what I should talk about, I concluded that I should talk about two or three more minutes and then sit down because the attention span of a group like this is very minimal. In fact, in fact, when I look back at the many graduations that I have attended, and there have been many, my own, my children's, my family's, and the hundreds of graduations when I was in the Air Force, when I think back at all of those graduations, I quite frankly can't remember a thing the speaker ever said. Recognizing all of that, uh, this becomes mission impossible of sorts. Your minds are quite naturally on other things right now, and that is understandable, and I applaud that. However, there is a thought, and here's the punchline, there is a thought that I'd like to leave with you. I'm not so sure there's room in your head or in your pockets for one more thought, because you have been through a lot of that. And all this faculty that sits with me and out there with you have tried to cram all sorts of notions into your heads, but I have a thought I'd like to leave with you, and I've made it simple, simple though that even simple pilots can grasp this. By the way,
By the way, I was speaking to an audience one day and referred to myself as just a simple pilot standing up front of a great audience, and someone stood up and said, isn't that redundant? <laughs> I realize that I am attempting, in spite of great odds, to slip something into your head, but I do it because I have been so involved and so committed to the profession that you are entering for so many years. I am an elder statesman of this profession, therefore I think I have a right to say something to you and after all, you've invited me not just to look pretty up here in this red robe. You are graduating from an aeronautical university. You are graduating from the only aeronautical university in our country, in the world. You, by your own choosing, have chosen to enter the world of aviation. As an active participant now, not just as a passive passenger, as many people are. Since you have done that, since you have made that decision, and you have worked very hard to get where you are, I think I owe it to you then, as one of the elder statesmen, and since you have given me your undivided attention, I owe it to you to give you something worthwhile. I would like you to remember what this senior aviator in the red robe thought was the most important quality you must develop now that you have graduated and earned your degree. Something that you must develop, nurture, never lose if you're going to be successful in this very unique career field and profession you have chosen. So 20 years from now, when you and I meet somewhere on the street, or maybe we'll see somewhere as you're designing a new airplane or a spaceship, or you're working on an airplane that I still am flying, or you're controlling an airplane from some remote site, Somewhere as we meet, I will ask you and remember each of your faces individually and say, what was the one thing that I told you that you should remember to be successful? So there'll be a test someday yet to come. So you better listen carefully. I want you to remember what the one quality that I believe is so important to success in this, in this profession. The quality is quality. Excuse my sophomoric play on words, but you must have quality if you're going to succeed in this profession. I believe so strongly that what has differentiated the United States aeronautical business, the aeronautical profession in our country, what has distinguished us from everyone else as aviators, as airplane builders, as spaceship builders, everything to do with the world of aeronautics, what has dis differentiated us from anyone else is the quality of our profession and the quality of the people that we have attracted to it. This is the largest class graduated from the Embry-Riddle University. The largest class. And what will distinguish you, the largest class, from all those other professions, all them other guys, is the quality that is necessary for you to be successful and quality is necessary to make our aeronautical industry successful. Stop to think, if you will, the characteristics of the medium that you are entering. The old saying that if the good Lord would have wanted us to fly, he would have given us wings. It is an unnatural area to be in. It is not the natural thing for us to do. It is a business that has, has inherent risks in it. And if quality actions are not taken by quality people, the effect will be catastrophic. In other words, you're in a position, you're in a, you're in a profession that deals with catastrophe if you don't do it right. You are in a business that is unforgiving, yet at the same time we have come to take it for granted. It amazes me all the time, yet every time I fly an airplane, and I've done it so often, it amazes me how we take for granted the enormous orchestration of events that have to take place all precision and all correctly just for the simple takeoff of an airplane. Yet if we back away from the gate three minutes late in a commercial airplane, you hear everybody around you grumble, well, here we're three minutes late again. We have taken our business for granted, and I think that's a great compliment. It's a great compliment to those who have gone before you and I, and it's a great challenge for you. Certainly most of you have seen by now that old plaque with a picture of an old bi-wing airplane that has just flown into a tree and is in some sort of dilapidated condition in the tree. 
And the words beside that picture are, aviation in itself is not inherently dangerous, but to an even greater degree than the sea, it is terribly unforgiving of any carelessness, incapacity, or neglect. That's an old, old statement, but it's even more true today than the days it was written. I belong to an organization called the Dedalians, as General Talman does, and it's an organization of heavier-than-air military pilots, and there are still some of the original military pilots of our country in that organization. And the great fun of belonging to that organization and of going to the meetings is to seeing the great contrast between the ages, the 90, 92-year-old pilot and the 22-year-old pilot in the same room discussing aviation. The stark difference between these two people is the old aviator always talks about, well, the third or fourth time I crashed the airplane, or the fifth crash I had, certain things happened and certain things caused it. Today's aviator only crashes once. There is a difference in the medium we are in, and it is unforgiven. When you assess the aeronautical industry that we will be part of, it is unlike any other in our country. It is not just another industry. First and foremost, we as a nation have absolute dominance in this industry, in every, in every aspect of the arena. Now that should pluck the string of opportunity for you budding degree holders, and it should also make you ask the question, why? Why have we dominated so much in this industry, yet have waned in other industries? And the reason is simply quality. Once again, this is one industry where quality has never ceased, where quality has never been compromised in both its people and what it does. The aeronautical industry contributes more to the balance of payments and trade than any other industry in our country, than any single industry. It surpassed agriculture several years ago very quietly, and most people didn't see that go by. But I sense that's why we have the largest class in history here today, because people, aggressive, entrepreneurial, thirsty people like you are looking for good things to do and places to make things happen. Why are we so dominant in the airplane business, the jet engine business, and space systems like the Hubble Space Telescope that opened its door just yesterday, <coughs> and the amazing space shuttle, the old truck that took it up there? Why has this industry maintained its market position while others have lost ground to foreign competitors? It's quality. Really it is. It's quality. It's what we do best. It's playing to our long suit. It makes the point that when something is done right and always right and those involved tolerate nothing but doing it right, success is assured. Clearly success is assured and yours will be as well. It's not a trivial notion, believe me. The economic effect of your profession that you're going into cannot be overstated, nor can the political effect, nor can the security effect of the aeronautical industry be overstated. Rosie and I have traveled the country lately since we retired, and every airplane we get on now that we are traveling in commercial airplanes, it seems that every airplane is full to the, full to the hill. It's something like a 98% load factor on every airplane. It has literally changed the economics of our country, and it also has changed the social style of our country. People take it for granted now that they can get up and go anywhere. They can go anywhere when they want to and how they want to, and they can afford to do that, and therefore the social structure of our country has changed simply because of this aeronautical industry. The military and security structure of our world has changed because of aviation. As a matter of fact, we are all excited and delighted and euphoric almost about the era that we're in of peace, and it's wonderful. Those of us who have contributed, those of us who believe we have given our lives for the Cold War, are declaring victory as we should. We have indeed won the Cold War. But it's well at this time that we look back at how we have done that and what has made the biggest contribution to this great time of peace that we are in, to the waning of communism, to the, to the, the breaking down of the Berlin Wall. And I think there are two events, both air-related, both aviation-related, that have started the fall of communism and given us this great era of peace. Those two events were first the Berlin airlift. 41 years ago, we drew a line in the sand and said to communism, you will go no further and we will see to it with our great capacity in airlift. And everyone said we couldn't do it, including those in our own country, and we did it because we had people like you with ingenuity and guts to get it done.
The second great event was some years later in 1973, during the Yom Kippur War, where Gold, Mrs. Golda Meir, the Prime Minister of Israel, said, our, the safety of our country is no longer assured unless you can help us. And the way we helped them was once again with a massive airlift over 7,000 miles, and people said that couldn't be done. But it was done. And it changed the balance of power, and it changed the security of the world, and it changed the geography of the world because, indeed, there were people committed once again to doing things that people believed they could not do, and they did it with aviation. You are trained for that. And I wish I were in your seats today because you will be faced with some of those same problems at some time. The heartening aspect to me as I stand here and look at you of being here today is that today and for several months now, there will be some 700 men and women enter this profession that I love so well with a set of skills better than anyone has ever, ever entered it with. with. The skills that you have learned here at Emory-Riddle Aeronautical University, the realization of the role quality plays, I believe, the role that quality plays is your very next step to success. The realization of what quality does for you is your next step to success. I'm not talking about quality control in some plant where they're making widgets or something like that, the old quality control program. And I'm not talking about TQM, which is total quality management. That's the new buzzword in Washington for everything it wants to be. I'm not talking about that. Far from that. Now, what I'm talking about is something much more esoteric, something very cognitive, something from within. It's down in here something that says that I always do the right thing the right way at the right time. I played a little game with my computer before I came down here, and I typed the word in quality. I just typed in the one word quality into our management information system. And it's a great system that goes into several databases and brings up data from everywhere, from the standards and poor's reports of the Library of Congress to Reuters news agency to all sorts of databases. And I typed in quality and sent it into the database and, and asked the database to come up with what it, uh, what, it would, uh, what it would bring. And what it brought up to me was the name of a new company, a new organization called a Consortium of Massachusetts Companies, the Center of Quality Management. And it was, its mission was to establish a learning network that will encourage the widespread use and application of total quality management methodologies. I guess that's interesting, and I think we should be excited and, and happy that companies are doing that, but that is not what I'm talking about to you today. Not a company somewhere. This is an individual thing. This is a very personal thing. And it can't be found in a database somewhere, and I didn't expect I would find it in a database I just wanted to see what was there. It's a simple fact that if you are to succeed in this profession you have chosen, you must think of yourself. You must think of yourself as a quality person with a quality education, entering a quality profession that will not only demand but exist on the very basic principles of quality and integrity. That is what makes the separate adventures that each of you are about to embark on so exciting and so very unique. I think it's time for a little well-placed arrogance on your part. Frankly, you're good. You're quality people. Let the world know how good you are. Let the world know you are coming. time to take charge and move out. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you, General Cassidy, for your inspiring remarks. Each semester, an outstanding graduating senior is selected to receive the Chancellor's Award. Candidates for this award of distinction are selected on the basis of academic excellence, campus activities, and contributions to the university and the local community. These students are leaders who challenge others around them to think, to question, and to act. Candidates for this award are recommended by representatives of the faculty, staff, student body. 
Selection for this honor reflects campus-wide recognition of the recipient's outstanding accomplishments. And I'm very pleased today to announce the senior who is receiving the Chancellor's Award. Michael Shaw, will you please come forward? Today Michael, today, Michael is receiving a Bachelor of Science degree in Aeronautical Science. He is graduating with a grade point average of 3.7. Michael is from Marietta, Georgia. He came to ERU directly from high school. His first involvement here outside the classroom was in intramural sports, where he excelled. Then, through the humanities department, he became involved in speech night. He believes the most important skill he has learned at Embry-Riddle is effective communication. Michael has been a lab assistant in the meteorology lab since January of 1988. He's a member and parliamentarian of the International Aviation Fraternity, Alpha Eta Rho, and has participated in various community activities. As a member of ODK, a National Honor Society, he has participated in many of their events and has served as an officer in that organization. Michael has recently received the Senior Flight Corporation Scholarship, which includes three weeks of classroom instruction and jet simulation training. He will be attending these classes following graduation and will be eligible to receive a Cessna Citation type rating. He was also awarded the Senior Scholarship and Academic Key by AER Fraternity. After completing his training under the Semiflight Scholarship, he will be seeking employment in the aviation industry as a pilot. Congratulations. Thank you very much. speech, but uh, I'll try something, if I can stand up. Uh, the senior year has been like a dream to me, and uh, if it is a dream, don't anybody wake me up, because I'm loving it. Um, I'd like to thank two groups of people, I think. First of all, I'd like to thank the many dedicated faculty and staff that have really helped me uh, to get where I am today. They uh, always put the student first. I never uh, see how much tremendous it. Second of all, I'd like to thank my parents who, uh, when they sent me here, I thought they were crazy because my high school record was so poor. They sent me to a school that uh, six or eight thousand dollars for the first for the first year, and uh, in the party capital of the world, I guess, at Turner Beach. I thought it was a little bit crazy, but apparently they saw something in me that maybe I didn't at the time. So thank them very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I would like to introduce the senior class president, Mr. Tim Mullins. President Tallman, Dr. Williams, General Cassidy, university officers, deans, directors and administrators, members of the boards of trustees and visitors, faculty and staff, family and friends, and my fellow graduates. You know, this graduation thing is somewhat confusing. In about an hour, each of us will have crossed this stage, and in doing so, we will enter the real world, leaving behind final exams, 
long registration lines, the riddle run around, and the 400 to 1 male to female ratio. The real world, where a college diploma represents so much. No job, no car, and at least $20,000 in debt to the bank. So why are we so happy today? Because we've finally finished. We've reached the end of a long, hard road. And we have more than a few things to look forward to and be excited about. I'd like to welcome all of you again to the largest graduation ceremony in the history of Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University and congratulate my fellow graduates on being part of it. Looking back, it's easy to remember the good times that we've had. But many of us can also recall the not-so-good times as well. Those times when we studied so hard, prepared weeks in advance, and even pulled an all-nighter before a big test, and still failed. <laughs> no matter what you did, you, you failed. I remember one summer, not too long ago, when a day didn't pass, when I didn't think of dropping out. Can you guys relate to that? Although we have all had days like this, we somehow found the energy, the motivation, and the perseverance to see our dream come true and make it here today. There are a few people here who I'd like to thank for helping us along the way, for without them, this wouldn't have been possible. To show our appreciation to the professors who have taught us, guided us, and become our friends. The senior classes voted on various outstanding faculty members. The criteria for this award is based on knowledge and expertise in the instructor's field, as well as a genuine concern with the quality of learning both in and out of the classroom. With those faculty who were presented this award last evening at the graduation social, please stand as a group and be recognized. Another group of individuals who have been selected by the senior class for their professionalism and generous contributions to the university are the outstanding staff members. Would those staff members who represented this award last night please now stand as a group to be recognized. third set of hard-working and devoted individuals who deserve recognition. Mr. Mark Dorenzo, the Senior Class Vice President, <laughs> Ms. Lori Ranfos, the Senior Class Council, and all the other volunteers who have made certain events this past week memorable, including Thursday's party. Would you please stand and be recognized? And lastly, I'd like to thank the greatest people of all, our parents and families. They've struggled through these years with us, stood by us, and supported us. The phone calls, the letters, the money, <laughs> and the advice that have pulled us through. You realize how hard we've worked and how much time we spent down at the beach. I'm just kidding, we've been studying. <laughs> I, think for, I think I speak for all of us when I say, thanks mom and dad. We love you very much. These diplomas are yours too.
One final thought. Today is a happy day filled with joy and anticipation. It is also a sad day as well. As Embry-Riddle graduates, we are happy to have been successful in our academic endeavors. We are proud of our accomplishments, happy to be moving on to new horizons, and happy to have no more exams. But when we move on, we leave something behind. Take a look around you. Who do you see? Boyfriends, girlfriends, study partners, co-workers. These people have been our family for the past three, four, or more years. <laughs> our friends have gotten us here, and leaving this family is sad. So how do we say goodbye? I'd like to answer that and conclude with an appropriate anonymous quote. Friends from high school, you may not remember, but friends from college will last forever. Thank you, congratulations, and good luck to you. Thank you, Tim. That was well said. And next year, we'll try to get the uh, president of the senior class a chair down near the front. <laughs> Congratulations to all our outstanding faculty, and especially those who have been honored by this class. Embry-Riddle is fortunate to have several armed forces commissioning programs active on the Daytona Beach campus. The campus, the Air Force ROTC detachment, has the largest elective enrollment of any civilian institution in the country. <laughs> and they were recently designated number one in the country. The Army ROTC unit is one of, has one of the highest growth programs in the nation. Several of our graduates have become the newest second lieutenants in the United States Army the Air Force, and we're extremely proud of these people, and I would like for them to stand and be recognized. Our newest second lieutenants. I would like to especially recognize two cadets from this group with Second Lieutenant Stephen Schaff and the Air Force, and the Second Lieutenant Michael Stelzig from the Army, please come forward. The Halifax chapter of the Retired Officers Association and the General James R. McCarthy chapter of the Air Force Association are awarding the prestigious Challenger Sabra Awards in memory of the crew of the Space Shuttle Challenger to these two young men. These awards are given for superior leadership, academic achievement, and contributions to the community that best personify the dedication and courage exemplified by the crew of the Space Shuttle Challenger. And in recognition as top cadets commissioned at the Daytona Beach campus of Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. I would like to ask our commencement speaker, General Casti, to come and make this special presentation.
Graduates completing their degree with honors will be recognized when their names are announced as they cross the stage. Graduates wearing white cords have achieved grade point averages of between 3.50 and 3.69 and are graduating cum laude. Graduates wearing red cords have achieved grade point averages of between 3.70 and 3.89 and are graduating magna cum laude. Graduates wearing gold cords have earned a grade point average of between 3.90 and 4.0 and are graduating summa cum laude. The program chairman will now present their candidates for the associate's and bachelor's degrees. Candidates for the degree a Bachelor of Professional Aeronautics Program Chairman, Mr. William B. Gruber. Leslie Albert Brown. Robert H. Hill. Carlos Rene Hollis. Robert James McGraw, Jr. Jack Wood Smith, II. Candidates for the degree of Associates in Science in Professional Aeronautics Program Chairman, Mr. William B. Gruber. Christopher Hilges Babcock. Peter G. Dembowski. Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Professional Aeronautics Program Chairman, Mr. William B. Gruber. Jamie Luane Barantino. <laughs> Master Sergeant Douglas Gale Bork from Hawaii. Joseph Kerbel III, Richard Edward Donahoe, from Laude, Gerald Ann Eichelberger, Felipe Gamboa, James Murphy Hyde, Senior Class Counsel, Matthew Henry DeRoche Leach, Dana B. Jimenez, Staff Sergeant Alan M. Lear, Warren C. Lyons, Chief Warrant Officer William Edward Mallow, Andre Edward May III, Mark David McNally, John Rogiani, Shaheed Hafiz Nagy, Sergeant Malcolm David Pagels, Sergeant Betty Sue Pagels, John Harold Phillips, Charles Willie Sapp, David Lee Shadfield, Michael B. Sheriffs, Magna Cum Laude, Omicron Delta Kappa, Owen Michael Sizemore, Second Lieutenant, Robert Lewis Holliday, 
Staff Sergeant Robert Ray Thompson, Jr. Second Lieutenant John Raymond Watts. Candidates for the degree of Associate in Aviation Maintenance Technology, Program Chairman, Mr. Paul F. Taylor, Darren Kayali, NOE, Akiona, Orlando Gino Capone, Robert Bruce Cook, Daniel Anthony Colaro, Elliot Roy Sereco, Gregory Michael Fontana, Jeffrey Scott Fortin, Steve Eugene Frost, Patrick Everett Harris, Michael James Foley, Michael James Kelsey, Jason Law, Christopher John Lee, David Allen Mantamayor, Andrew Michael Mayor Hopper, George Christopher Moore, Franklin H. Neal III, Paul Edward O'Brien, Henry Edmund Paul Jack Jr., Robert A. Peterson, Matthew Joseph Petrie, David Politis, David Walter Mansell, Dennis Eugene Laura, Gerald Alvin Sadler, Rafi Joseph Sahakian, Hardy Jeffrey Sims, James Andrew Skrzynski, William Joseph Staley, Brian Frederick Ojo, Flash Warbeck, Samuel Joseph Wiggins, Nicholas Ross Winsmith, Gene Austin Woods, Bruce Edward Wolseley, Candidates for the degree of Associate in Science in Aircraft Maintenance, Program Chairman, Mr. Paul F. Taylor, Mark Edmund Coleman, John Howard Warner, Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Avionics Technology, Program Chairman, Mr. E. Nolan Coleman. Nader al Ahadi, Adulkafor Bashir Ali al Akul, Peter Joseph Puki, Avionics Engineering Technology Honor Society, Christopher Timothy Pratt, Michael James Craig, Kum Lale, Avionics Engineering Technology Honor Society, Juan R. Gomez, Second Lieutenant John Robert Lepore III, Mark Richard Mayron, Avionics Engineering Technology Honor Society, Derek Anthony Soshan, Avionics Engineering Technology Honor Society, 
Scott Lawrence works goal. Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Airway Science, Program Chairman, Mr. William Lee Gruber. Richard Michael Brett. Alan David Schwartz. Albert Victor Season, Jr. Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Aviation Technology, Program Chairman, Mr. E. Nolan Coleman. Amjit Adal Arudi. Peter David Ashby. Clifton A. Borings, Jr. Robert Joseph Bukovac, summa cum laude. George P. Carr. David Paul Clark. Joseph Bogan Collins. Ronald Douglas Fowler. Guy Luis Gorgucci. Andy Nabosch, Dennis I. Griffith, Senior Class Counsel, Thomas Sean Hayden, Leon St. Gerald Powell, Anthony John Kumar, Kum Lauda, Steve Lamb, Michael Benny Leonardi, William Robert Arte, James Andrew Basura, Senior Class Counsel, Pietro Absher Mohammed Issa, Paul Frederick Kalak, Tomale. Jeffrey Claude Pauletta. Frederick Allen Phillips. George Joseph Pizzullo, Jr. Brett Allen Ritter, Nadia Colavan. Clifton Brian Thompson. Thomas James Thompson. Michael Trevor Turner, Eric Goskowitz, Edwin Arthorn Young, candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Aeronautical Studies, Program Chairman Mr. Woody B. Brewer. James Albert Aarons. Fred Salvatore Intro. Osama Abdullah Abdesabi. Mark Lewis Allen Olave. Wendy D. Adsman, Senior Class Counsel. Tanya Barrio. Kenneth Markham Gardner, Alan Ronald Blair, Cum Laude, Andrew Victor Bolonka, John Robert Barner, Kenneth Allen Bott, Fred Anthony Grassleck, second lieutenant. Karen Andrea Brown, David Chandler Brown, 
Christopher Allen Brown, second lieutenant. James William Burke.
Jeffrey Strong Cornier. Daryl Edwin Howard, second lieutenant, United States Air Force. Paul Brian Romanek, second lieutenant, United States Air Force. David Keller Indic. Rob Sean Joeli, Magna Cum Laude, Roman Hunt of the Capitol. Jeffrey Stewart Jan. William Joseph Koblick. Ronald Frank Koch. Michelle Ann Cordial, second lieutenant. Lance Edward Koster. Yeah, Lance. Talk louder. Mike Lee. Allison Doran Linsky. Yeah. Richard Dwayne Roy, Dolan Brown Health and Kappa. Michael Dante Marconi. Michelle Marie Martin. Colleen Marie Miller, second lieutenant. I wore Steve Martin. Felicia Christine Matthews. Vincent Pamoli Jr. John Francis Mercado. David Wallace Miller. Adam S. Hangy. Anthony Robert Montgomery. Joseph A. Montgillon. Kathy M. Mullins. Donovan Asrick Bouchet. Lester Nelson. John Peter Neusner. Mark Ryan Newton. Christian Travis Nichols. Stephen Craig Portland. Nancy Darren Page, Senior Class Paul D. Hagler. Thomas John Curra. Eric Scott Peterson. Angela Petrigli Arnold. Brett Warren Price. Sean Lawrence. Raker, Senior Class Counsel. Eric Wayne Richardson. James J. Riggs. James Lewis Reiner. Brian Anthony Rister. Lawrence Nelson Roberts. John Harold Rogers. David John Romeo. Timothy John Rooney. David F. Walker, second lieutenant, society and collegiate journalists. 
Philip Jonathan Roof. David Michael Salvi, who opens on Delta Kappa, singing Mount Delta. Grant William Schneeman, second lieutenant. You're going to scream for her, so pause for the time. Thank you. Stacy Troy Shipley. Kevin Michael Stover, who mother. Edward Carl Sick. Michael Scarver. Stanley Joseph Smoroski. Antonio Solaris. Enrique Sosa Marique. Heidi Rembrandt Stewart. Matthew Frank Stoffer. John Cook Strzelecki. Joseph W. Zarnak. Albert Peter Toomey. George Thomas. Thad Tibbon. Basil Vlahos. Ron Joseph Waits. Christopher James Walker. Robert Timothy Watts, the side of the Collegiate Journalists. Jeffrey Mark Waxman. Dennis E. Wilkins. Raymond Charles Willis, Jr. John Francis Wonder, Jr., Roman Run Delta Capital. Danilo Enrique Gannis. Craig Zimmerman, second lieutenant. Candidates for the degree of Associate in Science and Aeronautical Science, Program Chairman, Mr. William B. Gruber. Sean Joseph Enright. Peter Andrew Jackmo. Daniel McGonagall. Mitchell John Ivey. Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Aeronautical Science Program Chairman, Mr. William B. Gruber. Andre F. De Almadi. Rob William Ombre. Deborah Lynn Allman. Sahar Bumud Al Tommy. Claude Michael Anthony. Robert LeSean Atkins. Eric Raymond Aubin. Jeffrey Robert Baker. Joseph Michael Baker. Frederick J. Berger. William Gerard Seymour, second lieutenant. Peter Joseph Blasek. Harry Raymond Blunt. Stephen Guy Bolster, second lieutenant. Francis Andrew Boris. James Russell Bauer. 
Ryan Todd Bradley. Katie Briggs home. Theodore Bradford Bridges. Second Lieutenant Army, David Paul Bristol. Scott Michael Fielder. Dylan Thomas Cannon. James Edwin Caudill, Jr., Second Lieutenant. Roger Raymond Chandler, Who's Who, 1989. Alexander Chang. Second Lieutenant Christopher Ford Chicklet. Gregory Hugh Church, Second Lieutenant, United States Air Force. Magna Cum Laude, Who's Who, 1989. Brian Paul Charles. Brian Joseph Chalon. Michael Peter Sizak. Rocky Wilhelm Sizzler. Brian Paul Cobb. Glenn David Conan. Stephen Joseph Cooper, second lieutenant. Gabriel A. Costa. Dean Kevin Cohen. Brandon James Dom. Thomas Michael Dancer. Thomas Wayne Dawson. Richard Lewis Decaney. Gregory Scott Dryhawk. Jeffrey Driscoll. Christopher William Dreyer. Osama Hussein Alfred Johnny. James Brian Phelan. Brian Andrew Florence. Donald Coker. Matthew Dean Francis, Senior Class Counsel. John L. Fries. Greg Stewart Friedman, home from Delta Kappa. Donald Carroll Frizzone. Melissa Ann Gabby. H. William Garg. Stephen Robert Gaiman. Robert H. Gibbler. <laughs> John Allen Dutch. <laughs> Gary Neil Granger. Gary! Eric William Green. Nancy Elizabeth Gutierrez. Pedro Haber. Howard Riley Hamilton. Inga Marie Hoffman. Andrew Mark Helm. Lieutenant Derek Todd Hill. Dirk Andrew Hillfeld. Christopher Gerald. Eric James Johnston. Second Lieutenant Robert Duval Jordan. John Anthony Jemko. Harold Raymond Cachero. Brian Phil Cowley. Carl Eric Chemnitz. Joseph Gaston Kendall. Ian Paul Kennedy, second lieutenant. Keith David Kidman. Michael Trevor Curlew. Kenneth L. Clark, second lieutenant, United States Army. Bradley Eli Koch. 
Roderick Jerome Covell. Todd Williams Cunsford. Michael Kirk Ledoux. Susan Leslie Lamb. Michael Gerard Lee. Joseph Donovan Levy. Eric Linehan. Daniel Patrick Leo. Darrell Evans Lewis. Ronald Guy Lindsay, Senior Class Counsel. Christopher Bennett Floyd. Manuel Lopez. David E. McNullis. Thomas Owen Maha, Jr. Lieutenant Michael Francis Mani. Kimberly Ann Marquet. Scott White Marshall, Senior Class Counsel. Albert Owen McGroom, Second Lieutenant. Kristen McCarthy. Timothy J. McCarthy. Sean Francis McCord. Dennis Kevin McDermott. Wayne Robert McMaster. William D. Meadow. Hans Peter Merkel, Jr. Scott Martin Mishanshi. Jason David McCoy. Ramiro A. Montufar. Bern Gunter Majuler. Christian L. Nicholson. Aaron Lee Nielsen. Kenan Alcan O'Keefe, Senior Class Counsel. Jonathan George Onifer. Max Stephen Oswald. Renee Kara. Randall Scott Palmore. Vincent Philip Tapley, Omicron Delta Kappa. John Michael Papp, Senior Class Counsel. John Lauder Parker, the fourth. Scott Anthony Paulus. Anthony Jude Nakora. Abel Joseph Polito. Curtis Smith Powell. James Daniel Powell. James William Powell. William Albert Prince. Ronald William Walsh. Mark Anthony Latino. Malagro, Florentina, Rodales, Senior Class Council, June 1985. Christopher Jennings Reck, Suzanne Marie Reynolds, Stephen Richard Rowley, Fioris Samarzi, Joseph Santa Lucia, Andrew Martin Schiller, Eric Wolfgang Schiller, Kevin Patrick Schooler, Gary Lee Severson, second lieutenant. David Andrew Shaskin. Michael Stephen Shaw, Magna Cum Laude, Omicron Delta Kappa. Paul R. Simon. Arthur Charles Smith. Sean Roy Smith. Maria Alina Sochi. Joseph Andrew Sprague, Senior Class Counsel Treasurer, Rule 1989. David Michael Stolzer. Robert Lewis Standifer. David Frank Strout. Matthew Thompson Swaney. Robert Strauss Sportsel. William Allen Sylvester. Michael Allen Kamen. William F. King, 
Richard William Thomas Jr. William Stephen Thomas. Matthew Paul Thompson. Greg Douglas Putman. Luke Meng Suisi. Father John Squee. Jeffrey Stephen Van Tavern. Gerard James Manoa. Ricardo I. Vargas. Yeah. John Davis Waters. Yeah, you do. Dennis Wensler. Kevin Dean Werkheiser. Bernie James Weed. Marty Dean Williams. Michael Wynn, over from Delta Kappa. Candidates with a degree of Bachelor of Science in Computer Science with Aviation Applications. Program Chairman, Dr. Viraj Herman Paul. Raymond J. Bessonea. Laurie Marie Hartman. David L. McCroy. Dr. Carol Martin, Second Lieutenant, United States Air Force. David Lynn Mulligan, Senior Class Counsel. Hope Ann Sadowski, Senior Class Counsel. Candidates with a degree of Associate in Aviation Business Administration Program Chairman. Dr. Kenneth H. Fleming, Christy Lynn Hoffbauer, <laughs> Jose Antonio Montero, Senior Class Counsel, Laurie Rampos, Senior Class Counsel, Advisor, <laughs> Deborah Lou Simpson, Gregory <laughs> Frederick Keneal, Signal High, Matthew Edward Hoffbauer, Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Aviation Business Administration, Program Chairman, Dr. Kenneth A. Fleming, Tracine J. Anderson, John A. Marichovic, William R. Bohan, James Gerard Brady, Jr., Senior Class Counsel, Karen William Brennan, James Joseph Brunson, Matthew Lewis Pauley, Charles Walter Claiborne, Second Lieutenant, United States Air Force, Stephen Jesse Vaughn, Mark A. Durenzo, Senior Class Council Vice President, Corey John Engelhardt, Ahmad Asad Arhat, Thomas James Fitzgerald, Karen Ann Forbes from Hawaii, Senior Class Counsel, who was 1989, home from Dr. Robert Mark Friedman. Michael Clayton Darrow, who was 1989, home from Dr. Joseph Walter Gormley, Senior Class Counsel. Philip Richard Halstead. Stephen Ralph Heath. Russell E. Henning, Rich Henningson, Albert Bernard Jackson, Jr., Stephen Douglas Jewell, Christopher Keitlinger, Senior Class Counsel, Robert Henry Kilkillis, Patrick Lee, Senior Class Counsel, Robert Henry Lewis, Christopher Eric Morgan, Martin Elijah Lunchman II, Theodore James Lynch, Todd Vincent McKay from Hawaii, Adnan Ali Fadi, Madison McCulloch from Lawrence Senior Class Counsel.
Spicola. John Magnuson. John Magnuson. That's me. Deepak Mehta. Debbie A. Moshier. Paul William Mervyn. All right, Paul. Brian Salvador Masarco. Dean Paul Narendio. Caroline Ocasio, Senior Class Council. Robert Dos Reis Pacheco. Gina Wallace Canavella, Senior Class Council. Dina Maria Ramosta from Lale. Kim Elizabeth Reagan. Douglas Jane Grove. Crystal Rossi, Magna Cum Laude, Senior Class Council. Michael Leroy Ralph, Jr., who's who, 1989, North Carolina Class Council. James Bernard Rosanello, Senior Class Council. Joseph J. Salerno. Niket Krishna Saraf, Senior Class Council. Matt Johannes Joe, Senior Class Council. Mark G. Schwinn. Eddie H. Thomas, Sandra Lee Travis, Carlos Alberto Vargas, Senior Class Council, Randall Klein Ward, Kimberly Ann James Robert Lipscomb, Christian Ann Wilkins, who's who, 1988, Stephen William Ward, Senior Class Council, Mary Ellen Wynn, Donald Lee Young, Senior Class Counsel. Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Aviation Maintenance Management. Program Chairman, Dr. Sarah H. Fleming. Robert Thomas Bentley, Home of Pond Delta Capital. Christopher Joseph Dutton Muller. James Ryan Buckaloo. Nicholas Carson. Eduardo Galvero Cruz, Andrew Shane Dixon, Eric Christian Engel, Senior Class Counsel, Robert Lewis Galpi, Leonard Randall Brasley, Second Lieutenant, United States Air Force, Stephen Christopher and Bernard, Adrian Fuan Haddad, David Boyd Haddad, James Robert Hyman, Harry Craig Kester from Lawley, George J. Corey, Mark Chris Kilgus, Paul Kiriazapoulos, Peter Francis Langhorst, Alice Gray Marconi, Senior Class Counsel. Martin Mulder. Todd, Todd J. Burton. John Harold Nesbitt. Anand Akbar Karpa. David Curran. Kevin Patrick Perry. Thomas Stanley Pawlowski, Second Lieutenant, of the United States Air Force, Niagara Cum Laude. Andrew Joseph Price. Lawrence Damian Reese. Harold Kenneth Smith II. Christopher Stacy Trunkett, Cum Laude. Stephen Kenneth Vermillion. Robert Bernard Weber. 
Candidates for the degree of Bachelor in Science in Aircraft Engineering Technology. Program Chairman, Mr. C. Peter Halston. Mohammed Khalifa Alhani. Christopher Scott Fogo, who's who? Nicholas Coyas. Amanda Lee Andrus, Kumali, who is 1989, Power of the Song. Robert Brian Hamer, Second Lieutenant, United States Air Force. Michael David Hokowin, Society for Collegiate Journalists. Patrick Dawson House. Ali Salajari. Michael Gregory Cruz. Michael Stewart Mark. Carl Russell Moon, Samuel Benjamin Strout, Bobby Williams, Braves H. Naidi, candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Aerospace Engineering Program. Rene Philip Barakat. Kim Joon Butner. Kevin John Collins. Timothy James Darty, Sigma Gamma Tau. Michael John Gorber. Brian Robert Hester, Sigma Gamma Tau. Shaquille Blaou. Alan Roger Marquis, Sigma Gamma Tau. Tommy D. Rigger, Senior Class Counsel. Charles William Robart, Senior Class Counsel. Jose Luis Valtin Delgado, Jr., Senior Class Counsel. Charles Francis Zotto, Society of Collegiate Journalists. <laughs> Candidate for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Aeronautical Engineering. Program Chairman, Mr. John Noble. Right. Sayyidam Rafat. Mark E. Benfield, Sigma Gamma Tau, Magna Cum Laude. Michael Bellamy Venture. Howard Anthony Bowen, Kevin Lawrence Capito, Stephen Gerald Chase, Second Lieutenant, the United States Air Force, Blue Group, 1989, Roman Crown Delta Capital, Howard Anthony Charlie Gandhi, Bernard Buchan Chow, Joseph M. Connell, Paul Captain Corp, Magna Cum Laude, Sigma Gamma Tau. Kevin Charles DeGraff. Denver Drake. Heather Lynn Ensminger. Gregory Lynn Fogelman, Second Lieutenant, United States Air Force. Lorenzo Gasperi. Andrew John Gerlach, Second Lieutenant, United States Air Force. Sophia Marcel Gibson. John Gerald Rosinski. Andrew William Green, Second Lieutenant, United States Air Force. Bradley Frank Herbert. Senator Sullivan Hoffman, Second Lieutenant, Powell. Richard Andrew Howell, Senior Class Council, Public Man Delta Capital, Second Gamma Tau. Milton J. Hung. You aren't smiling. Anthony Wynn Urban. <laughs> Raymond Ronald Estenis, Colade, Second Gamma Tau. Danny May Johnson, Second Lieutenant, United States Air Force. Michael Brian Kelly. 
Carolyn Lombard, senior class counsel. Vincent Webb. Manuel Wood. Matthew Mahoney, second lieutenant. Joseph Anthony Mager. Philip James McLaughlin. Timothy Amir, the Shinjin Bush, all front of the Cabo City Gales Hall. Charles Joseph Mitchell. Misu Mizuno. George David Mulligan. Timothy Joseph Mullins, Senior Class Counsel, President. Sumit Dio. John David Newman, Lily Wong, Peter Paul Tarohese, Donald James Pointer Jr., Rashid Mustafa Rajab, Thomas Kelly Ryan, David Lee Rickardson. Michael Scott Ryan. Kiriako Cyrus. Fred Shaler. Christopher Phillips Schwartz. Gregory Dan Swain, Secretary of the United States Air Force, Safety Gamma Tower. John Alexander Serrano. Derek Paul Saves, Senior Class Counsel of the Who's Who 1989. Charles David Cherry. Edwin D. Squadra, Senior Class Counsel. Michael Scott Stalker, Second Lieutenant, United States Air Force, Secretary of the Army. Keith Michael Stamen. Kevin Gary Stewart, Senior Class Counsel, Sigma Gamma Tower. David Knut's Throne. Michael George Howell. Jimmy Lee Trigg, Jr., Second Lieutenant, United States Air Force. Sanjay Marma. Mark Philip Wilson, Comadre, Second Lieutenant, Sigma Gamma Tower. Robert Allen Wood, Komale, Sigma Gamma Tau. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the undergraduate portion of the ceremony. Dr. John W. Williams, Jr., Executive Vice President of Academics, and Dr. George Chang, Dean of the Graduate School and Research, will now present the candidates for the master's degrees. Candidates for the degree of Master of Aeronautical Science Program Coordinator, Dr. Charles Richardson. Douglas Allen Baylor. Johannes Bambias, Victor Frank Casella Jr., John David Castleman, James Brian Codwood, Stephen D. Bedebo, Ricardo Alexander Finney, Captain, United States Air Force. 
Teresa Ann Heath on the run down the Capitol. <laughs> Kenneth L. Mantro. Stephen Mark McCarter. Martin Lawrence McClellan. John L. Richard. David Kenneth Smith. Kenneth Go Stackpole. Candidates for the degree of Master of Aviation Management Program Coordinator, Dr. Bruce Chadmore. Alfred Gallardo. Candidates for degrees, please rise. Today of this university, I present to you the candidates for their respective degrees. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you, as appropriate, the <coughs> associate degrees, the associate science degree, the bachelor's degree, the bachelor of science degree, the master's degree, and the Master of Science degree with all the rights, privileges, honors, and responsibilities 
pertaining thereto. Congratulations, candidates. You may now move your tassel from right to left. <laughs> Mr. Austin Combs, um, has just uh, conferred upon you your degree, and he will now confer a degree, an honorary degree, uh, upon General Cassidy. Will General Cassidy please come forward? General Dwayne H. Cassidy concluded an outstanding 36-year career with the United States Air Force last year, which culminated in assignments as Commander-in-Chief of the Military Airlift Command, Commander-in-Chief of the United States Transportation Command, and member of the Secretary of Defense's Defense Policy Review Board. The Military Airlift Command under General Cassidy completed its most active period of flying in post-Vietnam history. Its taskings range from support of operations in the Persian Gulf, fighting forest fires in California, evacuation of Afghan patients, humanitarian relief operations, and an unparalleled concentration of Joint Chiefs of Staff exercises. General Cassidy's responsibilities today are equally awesome as Vice President of Logistics Technology for CSX Corporation. He serves on the board of CSX Sealand Logistics Company and as Chairman of the Board of World Trade Services, a Portland, Oregon company involved in import-export information management. He is involved in all facets of the company's activities in the international marketplace. He also serves as Vice Chairman of the Board for the National Defense Transportation Association and on the Advisory Committee of the Uniform Services Benefit Association. General Cassidy has earned a Bachelor of Science degree from the University of Nebraska and a Master of Science degree from Troy State University. In addition, he holds an Honorary Doctorate of Laws from Webster University. General Cassidy, in consideration of your past and current experience and influence in the broad spectrum of meeting United States transportation needs on land, sea, and air, Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University is proud to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Aeronautical Science, Honoris Causa. General Cassidy, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and upon the recommendation of the faculty, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Aeronautical Science, honors causa, with all the rights, honors, privileges, responsibilities appertaining thereto. Congratulations, Dr. Cassidy. The dedication of faculty and staff of Embry-Riddle provide the cornerstone of quality education. Mr. Frank P. Moran has served the university as a member of the faculty for over 20 years and is now retiring. We will now confer the rank of Professor Emeritus on Mr. Moran. Mr. Moran, will you please come forward? Professor Frank P. Moran joined Denver Riddle Aeronautical University 23 years ago and helped to nurture the aviation maintenance program, first as an instructor developing and teaching most of the courses and material that constitute the airframe and power plant program. He later was instrumental as department chairman of aviation maintenance in moving AMT to its present facility. He has substantially helped to upgrade the academic image of Denver Riddle through the integration of aviation maintenance into six associate in science and bachelor degree programs. Professor Moran has taught more than 175 classes since 1967 and has served on such campus organizations as the Faculty Senate, 
student conduct, promotion, self-study, and handbook committees. He served as an aviator in the United States Marine Corps for 21 years, flying a wide variety of aircraft. It was during that period he remembers practicing for carrier landing qualifications in the area at Daytona Beach Regional Airport where the Jack R. Hunt Memorial Library now stands. He was instructed with the Marine Corps' Command and Staff School when he retired from the service. Mr. Brand, it is indeed a privilege for me to present to you this degree, Honoris Causis, and this of course means Professor Forever. I'd be remiss if I didn't add my congratulations to all my friends, and especially to that lone second lieutenant Marine Corps, Lieutenant Schneeman. Thank you. <laughs> the interest, dedication, and support of two groups of people play a very important part in the success of our university, the Board of Trustees and the Board of Visitors. Will any members of these boards please stand so that we may recognize them? <laughs> the individuals who have played a major role in preparing our graduates for their future careers are the faculty. Will the faculty please stand and be recognized? The individuals who have managed the day-to-day -day operations of the university, will they too please stand and be recognized? <laughs> 